Hey guys, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and today I'm going to be taking you through a really important topic which is avascular necrosis. I'm going to be taking you through what this condition is, some of the key causes, some fantastic anatomy to show you why this might be an issue in practice, as well as some of the key signs and symptoms that you need to look for to see if your patient may be affected by AVN. So if you enjoy this video, we'd be super grateful if you could smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best content. But otherwise, if you're ready, let's dive in. So avascular necrosis, commonly referred to as just AVN. And this is a pathology where we have a lack of blood supply going to certain areas of bone tissue, which therefore leads to death of that bone tissue. And that makes sense from the name of the condition. Avascular, meaning lack of blood supply, and necrosis, meaning death of tissue. Now, there can be two main causes of AVN, atraumatic causes and traumatic causes. So first of all, let's explore some of the atraumatic causes. So when we're thinking about those atraumatic causes, well, the principal thing to think about is what is gonna cause an interruption in the blood flow to the bone tissue in order to cause AVN. So some key conditions that we can think of that may lead to this may include patients who have a clot. So when you have a thrombus that's in a blood vessel, it's naturally going to restrict the blood from getting down to that bone tissue. So here you might be thinking about patients who have recently had surgery or those who are on long-term anticoagulant medication as patients who might be more at risk of experiencing AVN for this cause. And one of the other main conditions that can cause that lack of blood throw is atherosclerosis. So this is where we have fatty deposits within blood vessels, which once again mean that there's more difficulty in blood getting down to the bone. So here you may be thinking of which individuals may be susceptible to that. And this is why excess use of alcohol is one of the biggest factors in patients that may unfortunately experience AVN. Other atraumatic causes include Gaucher's disease, sickle cell anemia, and excessive use of steroids in the past. So these all might be things you might want to check in the past medical history of your patient. So as we said, it could also be a traumatic reason that causes that lack of blood supply. And for this, we're going to dive into the hip joint, as it is the hip which is suggested to be the joint which is most susceptible to avascular necrosis in the body. So let's dive into the hip. So here we can see the arterial supply around the hip. The main artery which we can see running down the anterior pelvis is the external iliac artery, which branches into the femoral artery, one of the most well-known arteries in the lower leg. Now, two really important arteries that branch off the femoral artery are the medial circumflex artery and the lateral circumflex artery. And we can see that both of these actually join to create a ring of arterial supply around the neck of femur. And actually, there are a lot of smaller, deeper vessels that branch off this ring in order to supply the femoral neck and the femoral head even further. So you can imagine that if our patient has a neck of femur fracture, this may significantly disrupt this blood supply, potentially leading to a lack of blood to the femoral head, causing avascular necrosis. Now the other key blood supply to the head of femur specifically comes from the ligamentum teres, also known as the ligament to the head of femur. This is a ligament which runs directly from the acetabulum of the pelvis straight into the head of the femur. And there is a blood supply that runs from the pelvis directly through this ligament and into the head of femur. This artery is referred to as the foveal artery, but also known as the artery of the ligamentum teres. And this is a branch of the obturator artery. This artery makes up a smaller proportion of the blood supply in adults, but is actually the bigger proportion of the blood supply to the femoral head in children. This artery is commonly disrupted with hip dislocations. So always consider AVN in the back of your mind when you have a patient who has had a hip dislocation. So finally, let's think about some of the key signs and symptoms that your patient may be presenting with if they do unfortunately have avascular necrosis. And the first one is gonna be pain. 
This pain is very likely to be extremely local to the bone which is experiencing avascular necrosis. So if we're thinking about the neck or head of femur as we looked at in the anatomy, then they may well be pointing towards the hip joint itself in the anterior groin region. If they have AVN of a specific bone which isn't necessarily at a joint, for example the scaphoid or the lunate in the hand, then they may well be pressing to those bones specifically, or the navicular in the foot, another bone which can commonly experience AVN. So pain is one of the things we're looking for. But also we may look at dysfunction such as range of movement loss, stiffness and a deterioration in function relative to that bone. So again if it's the hip joint you may well find that they're presenting with stiffness at the hip joint, difficulty in walking, difficulty in going up and down the stairs, difficulty flexing the hip in order to put their socks on. And the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, is another joint whereby AVN is unfortunately a relatively common um, presentation, particularly after a fracture to the proximal humerus. And so shoulder stiffness, for example, may be one of the things you're looking for. So what we described there may well be one of the typical presentations that your patients may present with. But if we relate that back to our atraumatic and traumatic cause. So the atraumatic causes, we're going to be looking for that presentation in our patients who have an excessive use of alcohol in the past or excessive use of steroids in the past, sickle cell anemia, Gaucher's disease and some of the other things we mentioned. But then of course we need to think about the traumatic causes. So do you find that presentation in your patients who have had a trauma such as a fracture to the neck of femur or a shoulder proximal humeral fracture are we seeing that pain presentation there and you might find that that presentation doesn't always occur straight away it may occur two months three months six months or longer after their trauma and that might be because the blood supply is affected at the beginning but then as the effects of that lack of blood supply worsen over time, it may be that it's further down the line that they're reporting that pain and that stiffness. And in particular, look out for those patients who were doing quite well initially after their injury, but then at the three month stage are starting to say, actually things seem to be getting a bit worse. Relate that to the things we've talked about in this video to consider if unfortunately they do have AVN and of course if they do you're going to be referring straight back to their orthopaedic consultant or to their GP as a very urgent referral to have AVN investigated. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, and if you'd like to see more from us, then check out the description below for details of our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, as well as our website, clinicalphysio.com, which has loads more brilliant content from all the Clinical Physio team. But until then, we look forward to seeing you next time, right here on Clinical Physio.